Welcome to a tale of divine interference and a journey into the surreal. Picture this. It's February 1974. Philip K. Dick, the American science fiction writer known for his darkly comic novels of androids, weird drugs and false realities, is in pain. He's just had an impacted wisdom tooth removed and the sodium pentothal is wearing off. But what happens next is far from mundane. It's a moment that would change his life forever. A delivery woman arrives at his door with a package of Darwin. Struck by her beauty, Dick is particularly captivated by her golden necklace, adorned with a curious fish-shaped design. She explains this is a sign used by the early Christians, and then departs, leaving the writer to ponder the symbol that predates even the cross. This fish, or ichthus, the Greek word for fish, often inscribed within the symbol, conceals a secret code, an acrostic of the phrase, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Saviour. For Dick, however, this golden fish sign becomes a trigger for Gnosis, a divine knowledge. He writes in a personal journal, The golden fish sign causes you to remember. Remember what? Your celestial origins. This has to do with the DNA because the memory is located in the DNA. You remember your real nature, the Gnostic Gnosis. You are here in this world in a throne condition but are not of this world. Following this encounter, Dick's life takes a turn towards the extraordinary. He experiences a series of visions, hallucinations and dreams, many of which center around Vallis, a vast, active, living intelligence system. This entity, which he later defines in his 1980 novel of the same name, is a spontaneous, self-monitoring, negentropic vortex tending to progressively subsume and incorporate its environment into arrangements of information. In his experiences, Vallis takes on different forms. A pink beam of esoteric data, a compassionate feminine voice from outer space, or a telepathic link with a first century Christian named Thomas. Dick's reality begins to blur, with the landscape of 1974 California ebbing out and the landscape of Rome in the first century CE ebbing in. He receives messages from radios, and even once, while listening to the Beatles' Strawberry Fields Forever, he is informed that his son Christopher is dangerously ill. Rushing his son to the hospital, it's discovered that Christopher indeed has a potentially fatal inguinal hernia. In this journey through Philip K. Dick's life in 1974, we see the profound impact of a single encounter, a moment with a delivery woman and a golden fish necklace that triggers a series of mystical experiences. From the moment of Gnosis, sparked by the Ichthus, to the extraordinary visions of Vallis and the blurring of realities, Dick's life takes on a surreal twist that would profoundly influence his writing. In essence, Dick's encounter with the delivery woman and the fish symbol serves as a door to a world far beyond the mundane. It triggers a series of events that not only change his perception of reality, but also infuse his work with a deeper exploration of theology and metaphysics. His life in 1974 stands as a testament to the power of symbols, the mysteries of the mind, and the limitless possibilities of reality.